Week 6, Problem 8. Four capacitors are connected as shown in the figure below. Let capacitance C equal 20. Microfarads. Okay, find the equivalent capacitance between A and B. All right. So. <clears throat> okay. So, when you find equivalent capacitors, they are exactly the opposite of resistors. And the way I remember this, at least intuitively, is a capacitor is basically a, um, basically just a chunk of metal. It's a, it's a metal plate. That's all there is to it. There's nothing, nothing particularly fancy about it. So if you have two capacitors in parallel like this, then the way you're going to find the equivalent capacitance is you're going to add them. Normally you'd be like, oh, that's in parallel. It's a resistor. And you do the um, one over their reciprocal. Um, that's not the case here. And the way I remember this is, so the capacitance for a for a parallel plate capacitor is epsilon a over d. So you should know that. Um, so if you have more area, you have more capacitance. So here, if you look at this, it's like, well, let's say there's like an infinitely small separation between the two. Well, if you find the equivalent capacitance, you just add them. But if you just connect it right here, that's pretty much the same thing too. What you did is you just increase the area. You just added the areas together now and now you're just going to have a bigger capacitor. And that's why it makes sense that uh, capacitors in parallel would um, add together. So you know, you have one capacitor, two capacitors, whoop, together, separate, together, separate, together, separate. That's the idea. So you just have this infinitely small separation between the two and you basically have just one capacitor. Um, so if you remember that that's how you add um, capacitors in parallel, then just remember that, that in series is opposite. So you do add reciprocals. Um, it doesn't intuitively make sense to me, but I can usually get the math done correctly, or at least mostly correct. So find the equivalent capacitance between points. All right, so start by writing up C here. This guy will be 20 microfarads. 20 microfarads. So if we're putting together, I'm going to redraw this. I'm going to basically redraw it every time I simplify it. So 1 over 20, so this guy is going to be 1 over 20 plus 1 over 3 equals 1 over C equivalent. Okay. So, yeah, that's probably a better way of doing this. At least cleaner way mathematically. So 1 over 20 is 3 over 60. And 1 over 3 is 20 over 60. So when their powers combine, you get 23 over 60, which reciprocates. Huh? Huh? Reciprocates? Reciprocal? I don't even know if I use that word right or not. doesn't matter. It's 60 over 23, which is slightly less than 3, which makes sense. Okay? So it should be smaller than either of these which is 65 by 23, which is slightly smaller. Okay, so we redraw this, so then we have parallel coming together with a 20. All right, 60 over 23, and six. And then this guy will be a 20, All right? So when those, these two are in parallel, so they'll, we'll just add them. So we will have um, 60 over 23, I'm just going to do that. 60 divided by 23. Heck with fractions. 2.6. 2.6. So we add them together and we get um, 2.6 plus 8.6, or plus 6 is 8.6. We get ourselves a 20. And then we're going to draw it one more time. And we're going to have. 1 over 1 over 8.6 plus 1 over 20. So when you do this in calculator, I do this one plus that one, and then 1 divided by answer. 1 divided by 8.6 plus 1 divided by 20. And we'll do 1 divided by quantity. Let's see where this goes. Seems reasonable, and we get 6.01. Okay. 
6.01 and this will be microfarads okay oh and that's actually the answer we, we were looking for here so we'll put this guy in 6.01 mostly i'm just trying to solve for everything all right now calculate the charge on each capacitor taking that the voltage between point a and point b is 16 volts all right so i don't understand how capacitors work in life so what i do is i try and convert everything to a resistor analogy and then just go from there so i'm going to pretend they're all resistors and instead of current, I'm going to pretend that it, uh, instead of charge, I'm going to pretend that it's current. Um, charges don't move with capacitors. The definition of current is, you know, dQ dt. So it's, you know, how fast our charge is moving. So they're not quite the same, but they're kind of similar. And we can think of this as a bunch of resistors with um, current flowing through them. But instead of current flowing through them, these are actually charged on capacitors. So I'm going to start with the easy one, aha, which is the 20. So if this was, let's go to, ooh, pretty sure it's not magenta, does it tell me the color? Ah, really great, really sad that I was not told the color. All right, so we have, we'd have current that goes like this, we have current that goes like this. So this guy will have all the current going through it. So we can use our starting point as the equivalent capacitor. So capacitance equals Q over V. We have um, capacitance, so we're going to have Q equals C, V. So C is going to be 6.01 microfarads times 16 volts. I should just pretend that 6.101 is... Actually, I can just do that in my head. Uh, 16 times 6... 3 times 16 is 48, so 96. I think this is going to be 96.16. Bam! I'm going to do that just to see if I'm actually right. 16.01 times 6. Not actually that hard, but I'm going to be prepped. Six point zero one. Oh. There we go. Oh. See? This is why I shouldn't be using computers. Ninety six. No, no, no. Fix it. There we go. Alright. Ninety six point one six. And that's going to be micro coulombs. Right. I always get confused because C is for capacitance, but it's also for coulombs, which is a measure of Q. All right, 96.16. So we basically have 96.16 um, charges to, dis to distribute between all these other capacitors. Okay, so now we know that C and 3 are going to be the same because if we thought of this as current and the same current that passed through the 20 would have to pass through the 3 as well so we're good with there so we just got to find how much is on each all right so if we look at here all right we can find Ooh, i'm gonna do this a little bit differently i'm gonna use a voltage drop or a voltage rise yeah i'm totally gonna do that all right so we know that c equals q over v which means that v equals q over C. So in this case, um, voltage is what we're looking for. Q is the Q on the 20. So Q is 96.16. 96.16. Divide by the, uh, and this is micro coulombs. And we're going to divide that by 20. 20 micro farads, the micros cancel, and we get like about 4. 96.16 divided by 4. Did I say, no, I meant by 20. God, see? This is why I should either talk or write or write or talk, not both. 40, 4.8. Ah, 
Oh, it's, oh yeah, it's much closer to 4.8. Is it 08? Uh, yeah, I should probably keep that 08 in there too, just in case. Mm, yeah, I should. All right. So we know that, so I'm going to say that this starts at 16 volts and this ends at 0 volts. So a voltage rise of 4.8 will give us to 4.8. 08 volts at this point right here. So the voltage difference will be 16 minus that, which will be 11.192. Right. So if you're confused about where I'm going with this, so the delta V between this point and this point will be. Oh, I forgot the number, 11.192, 11.192, 11 were there really three ones in a row today? Yeah, there were. 11.192 volts. All right, so now we can find the charge on this guy, and then just say the charge is the same as on the other guy. All right, so Q equal, now C equals C equals Q over V. Hmm, I'm not even consistent with how I draw my Qs. That's a bad sign. Q equals CV. True. And therefore C is 6 microfarads times voltage, which is 11.192. Oh, man, that was terrible. That's okay. So this right here is 11.92 multiplied by 6. And we have 67. That seems a little, yeah, maybe. We'll go with that. 67. We'll say 6. Yeah. Equals 67.152. Sixty-seven point one five two. All right. So this guy will then be sixty-seven point one. Oh man, my handwriting is getting worse and worse. One five two. There we go. Yep. One five two. All right. So now we know that tells us what the the. I'm going to say current, but I really mean charge on the bottom, which means whatever's left is going to take the high road. So whatever didn't take the low road is going to take the high road. Hmm, there's probably some deeper meaning to that. I just don't know the references. 96.16 minus 67.152. 67.152. 29. Ah. I'm just going to say 29 is 29. There we go. So now, yeah, that, that's everything they're asking for. Bam. And we even kind of went in order of um, what they did, which means I probably did the way they wanted. <coughs> so the, I guess the trick here is you have to know how to find equivalent capacitances. Capacit Pass the tie. Meh. Not important. And then I used a voltage rise across a capacitor, similar to like a resistor, but with you know a capacitor, using C equals Q over V to find to then find a voltage difference, which I then used to solve the easiest uh, leg, which happened to be the six microfarads one, and then I said that that's gonna be the same as the other leg. Um, and then I used that to find the other leg, knowing that the different parts of the top leg would be the same. So that is how you do this problem. All right, everyone good? Excellent. See you on the next one. Was it nine? See you on number nine.